if those scary dudes who broke into Elliot's house and they were using like the Geiger radiation detector thingies to see if indeed E.T. had been in there, does that mean E.T.'s radioactive and prolonged exposure to him will give you cancer? Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my spoiler talk review, my Christian perspective on E.T. the Extraterrestrial. This video comes to you courtesy of Brian. He is one of my patrons, and he's giving at the level where he can request me to do a review of a movie, to do a Christian perspective on a movie, and he chose E.T. the Extraterrestrial from 1982, which I gotta say, I was pretty excited to do that because I have seen E.T. before this. It's just I haven't seen E.T. since I was a child, and the movie gave me some pretty weird nightmares. But I was excited to come back and revisit this movie as an adult because there was just an awful lot that I did not remember. So if you'd like to check out my Patreon, you like Durbania, you like what I do here and bring in that Christian perspective to movies, and you'd like to support that, I have the link to my Patreon in the description below. And I want to say a huge thank you to Brian for being a patron, and thank you so much for this request. E.T. phone home. Now, when I was watching E.T. the Extraterrestrial, I ended up watching it twice because I realized there's a lot of stuff that I missed the first time I watched it. And then getting into the second time, I was able to catch it. It's interesting because there were two messages that stuck out to me that were pretty powerful, but they both had one common theme, which is childlike faith. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And I think that's where we get that term childlike faith. Because to enter the kingdom of God, it's that simple faith, that belief, that childlike wonder. And there's a difference between being childish and childlike. E.T. is a coming of age story. Elliot holds on to his childlike faith as we watch his character grow and mature from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. But one of the things that I thought was really interesting was how this movie kind of already emotionally attached me to the characters right away because it opens in the woods at night and you got the little ETs and they're waddling around like little turtles outside of their shells and they're collecting plants and they're building their garden and they're just so sweet and innocent and attached me to these little aliens right off the bat. Then you got E.T. himself, our E.T., as he's like, whoa, you know, exploring the trees and everything. He goes, he sees the city lights, and you just see in wonder he's overlooking it all. And as they're doing this garden, I couldn't help but think of the Garden of Eden because here are these innocent creatures in their garden, and it's like that little time of innocence, and that's where this movie opens. But then the serpent enters the garden. So you have all of those dudes who show up in the cars. And what's really interesting about the imagery of the dudes all showing up in the cars, cars is that you never see their faces, which dehumanizes the humans and makes these innocent aliens more human than the actual humans. So in a sense, they are like the serpent in the garden. But what's really interesting is because E.T. kind of wandered a little far off, when this serpent arrived, when these humans arrived, it cut E.T. off from the rest of his family. Now, it's interesting because this is the part I didn't catch the first time. And when E.T. comes back from the dead, I didn't quite understand why he came back from the dead. So I had to go look it up, found an article that explained the whole darn thing because of his telepathic connection to the other aliens. His telepathic connection to them is his nourishment. It is his life. He needs to go home. And his family, they have to take off. The humans are getting closer. E.T. was too far away. They had to leave. And when they left, it's like E.T. was cut off from his source of life. And without that telepathic communication, what you really see is E.T. throughout the course of the movie is slowly getting sicker and he's slowly dying. But then he has that communication with Elliot. I think it's that that slows down his dying, but it's not stopping it because it's not the correct connection. It's not the connection he was born to have. And so he has to phone home. I thought that was interesting because it makes me think of our connection. Literally, there was a garden and Adam and Eve were in that garden. Full connection to God, full relationship with God. A serpent comes into that garden. Adam and Eve listened to the serpent over God. They ate off that tree and that disobedience was the thing that disconnected, unplugged them from God our Father 
the source of life. And so now this thing called sin begins to develop and it's like that sickness cut off from the source of life, this spiritual death begins to spread and spreads throughout humanity as generation upon generation is born and on and on we go. I didn't realize that E.T. was dying throughout the movie the first time I watched it. I just didn't. It took me reading that article and realizing that he was dying slowly throughout the movie because he wasn't in communication with his family for me to watch it a second time and see it through that lens. And then I felt kind of stupid. Just to be honest with you, he's like, oh, I totally see it now. Because what does E.T. do? He uses his abilities and he heals the flowers. And what do the flowers become? Kind of this little thermostat as to where E.T. is at. Because at another point in, in the movie, you see the flowers are beginning to wilt again, representing E.T.'s health, that it's slowly dying. It's just, my one problem is I didn't really notice Elliot getting sicker. I mean, come on, you have that hysterical scene where E.T. is home alone and he's drinking beer and Elliot is getting drunk. Get started with the... So they do a really good job establishing Elliot and E.T. are connected and Elliot is feeling everything that E.T. feels. But I'm not seeing Elliot get paler or his energy kind of go away or get sicker as the movie progresses. I feel like both of them are super sick all at the same time at the end, but there are lines. I mean, you have the flowers dying, so that's how you know E.T. is getting sick. You have Michael, Elliot's older brother, who says, listen to his breathing. He's not doing well. And so by some of the lines, I'm told E.T. is getting sicker, but I don't feel like I'm seeing it. But that's the subtlety of the lack of life that's in him, right? It's this subtle death that isn't super noticeable on the surface that is slowly beginning to drain the life out of E.T. until you get to the ending where he finally dies, which again, it's traumatizing. <sighs> And so E.T. dies, like officially dead as a doornail. But then his heart lights up and he comes back to life. And that's why I had to look it up. I was like, why did he come back to life? And learning it's because his people were returning. That connection was reestablished. And because that telepathic connection to his people was established, it brought him back. It was the nourishment and the life he was designed for. I wish we could have seen maybe the ship entering the Earth's atmosphere or seen it arrive in some way, shape, or form. Kind of like in the beginning when we saw all their hearts light up, it would have been cool like as they're arriving, their hearts light up and then we cut to E.T.'s heart lighting up. I feel like maybe that's a little bit on the nose and you're free to disagree with me. It's just I didn't catch this the first time through and I feel like something like that could help me with more context and realizing, oh, it's his people coming back and him being reestablished with them that gives him new life. And to me, that's just the picture of the saving power of God. We can't save ourselves. We can't bring ourselves back to life. We are fully dependent on him coming to us. And he did. God loves the world in this way, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That connection was severed. And so we need that relationship and that connection to God to be reborn and brought back to life on the inside. And so the way we do that is by simple childlike faith. God made a way for them to be healed. So will the Son of Man be lifted up so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And by that simple childlike faith, we are reconnected to God's life, that life that we were designed to have. E.T. from home. <laughs> and so that was really kind of a powerful image for me to see as I'm watching this movie, just his reconnection to the life of his people brought him life. Our reconnection to the life of God brings us new life. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That part of you, that is what must be reborn to new life. Once we are connected to that new life, a relationship begins. And I feel like when we look at Elliot's side of things, we really get a reflection of what that relationship is like. Because of that close-knit connection he and E.T. have, they feel what the other is feeling. So think about this. We see that E.T. is feeling alone and abandoned as his family takes off and he's left alone on this planet. And then early in this movie, it is established that Elliot's father has left them. And already we can understand that Elliot and E.T. are both 
feeling alone, abandoned, scared, and wondering what's next. If I'm stepping outside and I toss a baseball into a shed because I heard a funny noise and that baseball is tossed back at me, I'm running for my life. I'm calling the police. I'm calling animal control. All bases are covered, okay? So I'm not saying, children, if you hear a funny noise, go investigate. No, what I'm saying is, this is a picture of childlike faith. The childlike faith was his pursuit of truth. He wanted to pursue the truth and know exactly what it was that was in that shed. So when he and E.T. meet and then they connect, you have this bond that I think forms so easily and quickly between them because they understand each other. E.T. understands what it feels like to be alone and abandoned and so does Elliot. So they have that connection and their strength in that connection. For since he himself has suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. Now that's talking about Jesus. He became a human being. He suffered the way you and I suffer, but he also spent 40 days in the wilderness being tempted. He has experienced temptation firsthand. And what's more, he didn't yield to it. And when you don't yield to it, that's really where you feel the full strength of it and the pull of it to try to pull you in. But he resisted that. Jesus knows exactly what we're going through. And what's interesting is this bond that E.T. and Elliot have, you can see how it strengthens them both and how it matures them both by the end of the movie. But his being here is a miracle, Elliot. I'm glad he met you first. But the picture of their telepathic connection, I feel like is a picture of having the Holy Spirit living in us because it is that intimate connection with God. It is that mind of Christ that God has put in us. He has given us his spirit so that we do have that close and intimate connection with him. And so it's interesting because this connection comes at the right time for both Elliot and E.T. and it gives them both strength because the end of the movie, they gotta say goodbye. Now, childishness, would be that selfishness to demand and that the other either come or the other stay. Childlikeness is the acceptance of the truth and then making the mature decision based on the truth. E.T. needed to go home. Elliot needs to stay home with his family. It's that mature decision, that childlikeness to know the truth, accept the truth and be set free by the truth. And it was that bond and relationship that gave them both the strength to make that mature decision. I'll be right here. The Holy Spirit will never leave us and he will never forsake us. He's constantly working in us. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Is E.T. a Christian movie? If you look at it through this perspective, I definitely think so. Because I definitely think it shows us that childlike faith, that when we just simply believe with that awe and wonder in Jesus, the new life that comes into us, we are reborn with it in that relationship that we have. I think as you watch this movie, you can see both of those things picture. I want to say thank you to Brian. Thank you so much for being a patron of Durbania and supporting what I do here. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for requesting this. It was fun to dive back into this movie and see these messages. Now, what did you think of E.T.? Let's talk in the comments and hit that subscribe button in the bell by the subscribe button so you're notified for my next movie review, my next Christian perspective review, or anything else that I do here. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbania.